What is it? As far as I know, it's a silver salver. Right. Um, my grandfather bought it in 1944 for 30 pounds. Right. Most people, when you find a salver like this, will tell you straight, oh, it's, it's a visiting card uh, tray. Right. Which it isn't. When this was made in the uh, 18th century, what would have sat on top of it would have been almost certainly a teapot or a coffee pot. The salver itself, though, you can see from the marks here, was actually made in, in Ireland. So we've got the figure of Hibernia and we've got the crown harp. Uh -huh. Now, they, those are both um, for Ireland. Maker's mark, a chap called Goodwin, uh, working in Dublin. And if they put a maker's mark on, they generally left off the date letter. Right. And if they put on the date letter, they left off the maker's mark. <laughs> um, there's got to be an explanation for that somewhere, yeah. but uh, it is far better to have what we've got here, right. which is the maker's mark and no date letter. Because all is not lost, you can actually work out when the salver was made, to within two or three years very often, sometimes to an actual year, because of the variations in those two marks. Now, we look down the, the columns here. There we are. In fact, I, I've checked on that, and it's 1743 uh, really? to 45. There's a very distinctive feature there yeah. where the harp is broken at the top, uh -huh. and that appears in the harp there. Uh -huh. So we can know, even without a date letter, yeah. that it was made at that time, which, which is super. A lovely little salver. Super coat of arms, quite original Rococo cartouche. £30 in 1944, had you thought about today? No, not at all. I would think that you would have to insure that as an Irish one. And Irish ones are always worth more than the equivalent English example. Really? As an Irish one, I would say you would need to insure it for £1,000. Really? It's a smashing little salver. Gosh, thank you. Thank you for bringing it up. Thank you. The real thing I'd like to know about it is, is it a marriage? Is it a marriage? Is it a marriage? Let me have a look at the back first. <laughs> no, that's OK. Um, well, I can understand the question, because when you first look at it, it's disproportionate, isn't it? It's a little bit squat, a little bit dumpy on top. But, but no, it's not. It's a perfectly genuine and, I think, very special piece. I mean, I love this. Lots of things that we look at first. It has the great quality of a fine piece, but it's naive, it's a strange word to use, but quaint, I think, is probably the correct word. It's a quaint piece. It was made in the country, maybe for a squire, who got great taste, but probably low ceilings or a, a smallish house, so he required all the features of a grand one, but he had to get it into a limited space. Look at the door, for example. You've noticed that's a 13-pane door. That's a magic number for 1760, 1765, uh, glazed door cabinets. The other thing is that it's quite certainly made by someone who's been making furniture for a long time because when you open the door you've got an H hinge. Now that's an archaic type of hinge by 1765-1770, usually used only on corner cupboards and then it was going out of fashion for an ordinary butt hinge. But the one thing that's wonderful, look at that swan neck cornice. I, do you sit and wonder at that? I would. Look at it. It just is marvellous, that scroll coming round. And look at that. Almost like a paper scroll. That is magic. I think that's... I covet this piece. If you hadn't already guessed... I... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> now then, the base part is a very good standard bureau. So the man was used to making a bureau, but he, he was a bit uncertain when he came to trying to fix all that into a small space. Tell me about this. How long have you had it? Is it a family piece? It's, a fa it's been in the family for about 50 years, and it was uh, left to me by my mother in the 1980s when right, she died. Right. And, and you don't do anything with it? Just look after it? And... Just a little bit of polish now and then. Excellent, excellent. There are collectors for this type of... I use the word again, this quaint look. <laughs> and take that away, of course, you've lost three-quarters of the charm of it. That alone would help sell it. And I think you probably get in the region of eight to ten thousand pounds for it. Thank you very much.